前四啊，第一个剪映，第二个 TikTok， 第三个 Team， 第四个西映。Team 是啥？海外榜拼西西啊。The American user app download rankings mentioned by this TikTok influencer are based on data from March. However, according to the latest rankings in May, the online shopping platform Timu has risen to the first position in both Google Play and the Apple Store. In the Google Play download rankings, the top three apps are Timu, TikTok, and Shein, all of which are established by companies with Chinese backgrounds. Timu was established in Boston by its parent company PDD Holdings in 2022. It positions itself as a cheaper alternative to Amazon. PDD Holdings, a Chinese e-commerce giant headquartered in Shanghai, went public on the Nasdaq in the United States in 2018. Recently, media reports indicated that PDD listed Dublin, Ireland, as its principal executive office in a filing submitted to the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. Replacing its official headquarters in Shanghai. Until just over a month ago, the About Us section on the Timu website stated that Timu's parent company was PDD Holdings Inc., which operates Pinduoduo in China. However, that information has now been removed from the website. Timu is not the first Chinese company to make such a change. Due to the expanding ambitions of the Chinese Communist Party and the increasingly tense relations with Western countries. Western nations are becoming more concerned about the origin of products or services in global trade. In anticipation of these concerns, more and more Chinese companies are attempting to downplay their connections to China by changing their headquarters addresses in order to evade investigations and concerns from the international community about their Chinese background. TikTok has also been defending itself as not being a Chinese company. However, it is well known that TikTok's parent company is ByteDance, which is based in China. Due to concerns that user data on the TikTok platform could ultimately fall into the hands of the Chinese government, jeopardizing the safety and interest of the public, TikTok is facing increasing scrutiny from Western governments. For security reasons, the United States, United Kingdom, New Zealand, Canada. Belgium and the European Commission have all requested or implemented measures to completely remove TikTok. The Chinese fast fashion e-commerce platform Shein, which is ranked third in app downloads among U.S. users, has also been downplaying its Chinese background. In 2021, when Shein was gaining popularity in the U.S., its website only referred to itself as an international company, without mentioning its headquarters or China. Today, the Shein website claims its headquarters is in Singapore and mentions having major operational centers in the United States and other global markets, still without acknowledging China. But what are the facts? Records show that Shein is a cross-border fast fashion company founded in 2008, with its headquarters initially located in Nanjing, Jiangsu Province. In 2015, Shein moved its headquarters to Guangzhou for better supply chain management. The company primarily targets customers in the United States, Europe, and Australia, offering affordable fashion clothing with an average price of less than ten dollars. Shein, which started by selling cheap products, didn't attract much attention until June 2021, when its download numbers surpassed Amazon, bringing this dark horse e-commerce platform into the mainstream overseas. Shein has been called the Chinese version of Zara. Has achieved over 100% revenue growth each year from 2014 to 2020, thanks to its low prices, fast product turnover, and aggressive advertising. While its growth rate has slowed in the past two years, it still exceeds 50%. In 2022, Shein's revenue reached $22.7 billion, equating to 64% of Zara's revenue that year. However, its company valuation has reached $100 billion, surpassing the combined value of H&M and Zara. There have been reports indicating that Shein is preparing for an initial public offering in the United States. To avoid scrutiny from the U.S., Rojet Business, registered in Singapore in 2019, took over as the legal entity operating Shein's global website at the end of 2021, replacing Zotop. Shein's headquarters also relocated to Singapore. And its founder and CEO Chris Xu has become a permanent resident of Singapore. 
Another company that actively avoids being labeled as Chinese is Binance, a global cryptocurrency exchange established in Shanghai in 2017. Its CEO Zhao Changpeng has consistently stated that referring to Binance as a Chinese company is a misconception. In fact, in the past year, as many as 500 Chinese companies have quietly relisted or registered in Southeast Asian countries. To hedge against political risks amid escalating tensions between China and the free world, Wu Sezhi, deputy secretary general of the Taiwan Public Research Institute, pointed out that the motives behind Pinduoduo and other Chinese companies' actions are evident. They want to portray themselves as non-Chinese companies because the international market values profitability and corporate brand image, he said. They want to shed their Chinese labels, which is currently the most challenging issue for Chinese companies going global. While many Chinese companies are making efforts to present themselves as international and remove references to China or Beijing, their security remains a focal point of international attention, according to global media reports. In the case of TikTok, despite its continuous denial of being controlled by the Chinese Communist Party. A strong witness has now come forward to confirm the existence of this fact. On May 12th, Yin Taoyu, a former executive of ByteDance, the parent company of TikTok, accused ByteDance in the Supreme Court of San Francisco of acting as a propaganda tool for the CCP. He disclosed that the CCP has a channel that enables access to all data of ByteDance, including information stored in the United States. ByteDance has established an internal committee controlled by the CCP, which not only monitors the company's operations comprehensively, but also provides guidance on promoting core communist values. This committee collaborates with the CCP's propaganda efforts on its social media platforms, suppressing content opposing the CCP and promoting content aligned with CCP interests. Yu Yintao described his first-hand experience during his tenure at ByteDance's Chinese office. Witnessing how engineers adjusted the algorithm of the Chinese version of TikTok to increase the popularity of content expressing anti-Japanese sentiments, he claimed that they did so without hesitation or any debate. He also accused ByteDance of stealing technology from competitors such as Instagram and Snapchat. Yu Yintao stated that ByteDance developed software that allowed unauthorized access to copyrighted user-generated content from competitor websites. This content was then reposted on their own platforms, such as Douyin, the Chinese version of TikTok, to increase user engagement. He further alleged that the company created fake accounts to track and like specific genuine accounts, aiming to boost indicators of potential investment and user participation. Yu Yintao stated that the reason for filing the lawsuit was his alleged wrongful termination by ByteDance. He served as the engineering department head for ByteDance's U.S. business from August 2017 to November 2018. He described how he was dismissed after disclosing what he considered to be unethical conduct by ByteDance. According to the New York Times, Yu Yintao, 36 years old, was born and raised in China and currently resides in San Francisco, U.S. In an interview, he stated that during his tenure. The data of TikTok's U.S. users was stored in the United States, but engineers in China could access that data. Although no significant security issues have been found with Timu at present, its sister company in China, Pinduoduo, has previously been accused of monitoring customers. American security experts discovered that this Chinese shopping application exploited around 50 vulnerabilities in the Android system. Allowing the app to access users' location, contacts, calendar, notifications, and photo albums without their consent, the software was also found to be capable of altering system settings and accessing users' social media accounts and chat records. Additionally, the app could prevent its own uninstallation and track the activities of other shopping applications. Security experts have described Pinduoduo as the most dangerous malware ever found in mainstream applications. In March of this year, Google removed the app from its store. According to current employees of Pinduoduo, the company established a team of approximately 100 engineers and product managers in 
specifically tasked with exploring Android vulnerabilities and developing methods to exploit them for profit. It has also been reported that initially, Pinduoduo collected data primarily from rural and small town users, avoiding users in major cities like Beijing and Shanghai. CNN reports that the Pinduoduo app, with over 750 million users, concealed malicious programs, leading to unprecedented privacy violations and harm. It is said that most of the team of 100 individuals internally studying Android vulnerabilities at Pinduoduo has now been transferred to the relevant department of its cross-border e-commerce overseas version, Timu. The CCP passed the intelligence law in 2017. Which stipulates that any organization or citizen shall support, assist, and cooperate with national intelligence work in accordance with the law. On April 26, the CCP amended the counter espionage law, expanding the definition and powers of Chinese national security personnel, allowing them to access and retrieve data, and summon and inquire about property information. It also requires Chinese citizens and organizations such as postal, express delivery, telecommunications, and internet service providers to provide necessary support and assistance. He Chenghui, Deputy Secretary General of the National Security Research Institute in Taiwan, stated that the CCP government uses the intelligence law to require all Chinese companies to assist the government in collecting intelligence when necessary. He further mentioned that simply changing the company's address is just a disguise when the CCP government directly pressures private enterprises to cooperate. It does not prevent private enterprises from complying with the requirements of the CCP's intelligence law. Economist David Wong, in an interview with the media, stated that Pinduoduo changing its name to Timu does not allow it to evade the rules stipulated by the intelligence law. Because the organizations and citizens defined by the intelligence law are very broad, and the interpretation lies in Beijing. If it considers you a Chinese citizen or a Chinese company, you must cooperate with it. Even companies like TikTok cannot escape this law, because Beijing has the authority to interpret its scope of impact. Although these companies have changed their headquarter addresses in filings with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. It does not change their relationship with China. Moreover, Pinduoduo's defection path has not been smooth. When Reuters reported on May 3rd that Pinduoduo had moved its headquarters out of China, it caused a stir in public opinion domestically. The following day, Pinduoduo issued a response. On May 4th, a Pinduoduo spokesperson told mainland media reporters that the news was seriously inaccurate and a complete misinterpretation. They said that Pinduoduo was born and raised in Shanghai, China, and its headquarters will always be in Shanghai, China, without any changes. However, lawyers familiar with U.S. securities regulation interpret that, according to the SEC's Edgar Filer Manual, the term "principal executive office address" is generally used to refer to the company's headquarters location, regardless of whether these office addresses are also the primary place of business. So is Pinduoduo truly a Chinese company or an Irish company? It seems they themselves don't want to make it clear. Now it appears that their preferred model is to be seen as a Chinese company by the Chinese and as an Irish company by the Americans. From Huawei to TikTok, with the increasing geopolitical tension between the United States and China, more and more Chinese companies have come under scrutiny. Chinese e-commerce platforms Xi'an and Timu have also become the subject of scrutiny from exploiting legal loopholes in the U.S., leading to unfair competition. In mid-April of this year, the U.S.-China Economic and Security Review Commission, or USCC, released a report reviewing Chinese fast fashion shopping apps such as Xi'an and Timu. The report revealed issues including trade violations. Forced labor and intellectual property infringement. The USCC report pointed out that Xi'an is involved in exploitative labor practices and violations of labor laws. In a 2022 investigation, it was found that workers in the Xi'an factory earned an equivalent of $556 per month and produced 500 garments per day. In another factory, workers received only four cents per garment instead of a basic wage. 
The report also discovered that workers in Xi'an factories worked 18 hours a day, with only one day off per month, clearly violating labor laws and Xi'an's own supplier code of conduct. The Financial Times commented that Xi'an's status as a Chinese brand could be its fatal weakness, regardless of how its background is concealed. Western consumers are increasingly becoming aware of issues such as Chinese cotton from Xinjiang and forced labor associated with it.